like to call the regular town council meeting to order uh, for uh, the month of June. At this time, if everyone would please rise for our invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Kevin? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for a beautiful day. We thank you, Lord, for blessing our town. It's such a good day we had over the weekend. We ask that you would continue to pour out your blessings upon our town. I mean, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
I kind of like usual this today. <laughs> this time, I will now declare some public hearing as advertised uh, to uh, hear comments regarding the cigarette tax ordinance for the town of Lebanon. Let's see, did I see? Is Dustin on that list there? You want to address us now regarding that, Dustin? Yes, sir. This is public hearing, over. there you go. Students who have 
indicated that they're depressed or students that have attempted suicide or thought about suicide remains very high. Uh, if you're not aware, suicide rates in Southwest Virginia are two times the state and national average. Uh, it is very concerning. A lot of us have known people, students, that have had those sort of thoughts and behaviors and we're always working to remove, uh, reduce the stigma around getting treatment for mental health disorders and for depression. But also with opioids, you'll probably have seen the information from the health department that 2020 is going to be the worst year on the record for opioid overdose fatalities. The rate is still very high in Southwest Virginia. Russell County, thankfully, not as bad as some of our neighbors, but Hammond and Dickinson especially. Um, of course, we are now seeing an influx of methamphetamine as well. Fentanyl and opioid lays deal with methamphetamine that's being trafficked uh, across the border. Uh, so as we're working on that, we're doing a lot more Narcan training. So if you all can help us, if there's any avenue, any event, any opportunity where we could come and train people on how to administer life-saving Narcan in an opioid overdose situation, we'd really appreciate it. Um, but getting back to tobacco. Uh, two years ago, the last page of your handout, two years ago, uh, the Commonwealth Attorney's Office worked with Detective Kaiser on uh, an operation, a compliance check on two of our vape shops here in town. Um, and both vape shops did fail that compliance check. Um, we have continued to see some questionable behavior, maybe not illegal behavior, uh, but certainly conduct that we would consider to be questionable about the conduct of these retailers, one in particular um, who are more aggressively targeting minors in the sale of vape products. They're also now uh, selling products that could be used to conceal vapes uh, that students could take into school or hide at home uh, from their parents. So we, we are more concerned about that, so we welcome an opportunity to work with Lebanon Police Department again on compliance checks uh, this year. Um, and any other ideas or, or promotions that we can do to make parents more aware that these things are being sold in our town uh, and the dangers of vaping and how nicotine is just as addictive and cause uh, adverse health outcomes as well. So, thank you all very much. Thank Please you. adopt this ordinance. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Anyone else? Public hearing is closed. This time, uh, Ms. Halsey, would you, can you update us on um, if we pass this, where we stand, or, or, or I read some of the, if you're the feeders, you got us ready to go. I'm ready. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, but, you know, I'll just start with basically, you know, this is new to all of us, and I'm learning as I go along, and I think it's a good
I'm on July 1st. Hopefully they will have everything stamped. But I plan to go to each merchant. And any cigarettes that are not stamped, I'm going to come up with some little unique mark of my own. And the next time that I go back, if they still don't have those marked then, or stamped, then I'm going to know by my mark right. that I have on there. Um, I'm going to keep a number, like do a slight inventory of how much that they don't have on that day. Okay. But um, I'm ready to go. Okay. So you would actually, I guess, uh, Janice will be our uh, of course, or you'll be, what's the name? You're going to be over coordinating this tags and, and compliance. You're going to, and then you're going to work with the police department with Mr. Diskins and his staff. Very good. Anything, any other questions for Janice while she's with us? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve the cigarette tax ordinance? Well done. Uh, County has already approved the ordinance. Their ordinance. Their ordinance. Yes. If we don't approve it in the town, they're going to get the town tax dollars. So therefore, I'll make a motion we approve it. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those. Ms. Janice, it sounds like you can hit the ground running in the morning. Right. Here we go. This is my dream. <laughs> Okay. All right. Now we're going to move to one of the. A lot of times we don't get this chance, but when we get the opportunity, we like to take the chance to recognize our citizens, employees. Uh, we had a. We've had an officer who has completed his training through the Law Enforcement Academy. Uh, normally they have a graduation in May, and we try to go. However, uh, under their COVID guidelines this year, we were unable to attend. Uh, uh, John told me he, his wife didn't even get to go with him. So it was just him and Eric, you don't substitute well, but, uh, <laughs> but you're the chief. Yeah. Okay? Uh, so what we wanted to do, John, is to have you here formally in front of the council. Uh, we all want to thank you. And I'm sure every council member will have a comment. But we're proud of your accomplishments. Uh, and we work, we wish we were been able to be there to see you get your certificate line. The chief tells me those are about six weeks after the, the graduation or something. We do, sir. I, I actually, if it's okay with the council, um, we've held off on introducing Mr. Jackson to his law enforcement code of ethics. Okay. And I had that in mind for two weeks at code of ethics with him tonight. Let's do it. That'd be great. You want to do the announcement? Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead and raise your right hand. As a law enforcement officer, my fundamental duty is to serve the community, to safeguard lives and property, to protect the innocent against deception, the weak against oppression or intimidation, and the peaceful against violence or disorder and to respect the constitutional rights of all the liberty, equality, and justice. I will keep my private life unsullied as an example to all and will behave in a manner that does not bring discredit to me or to my agency. I will re remain courageous, calm, in the face of danger, scorn, or ridicule, develop self-restraint, and be constantly mindful of the welfare of others. Honest in thought and need in both my personal and official life, I will be exemplary in obeying the law of the regulations of my department. Whatever I see and hear of confidential nature or that is confided in me in my official office, I will be kept secret unless relevation is necessary in performance of my duty. I will never act officiously or permit personal feelings, prejudice, or political beliefs, aspirations, or friendships to influence my decisions. With no compromise for crime and with relentless prosecution of criminals, I will enforce the law courteously and appropriately without fear, malice, or Ill, Ill will, never employing unnecessary force or violence, and never accepting gratuities. 
I recognize the badge of my office as a symbol of public faith, and I accept it as a public trust to be held as long as I am true to these ethics of police service. I will never engage of act I will never engage of acts of corruption or bribery, nor will I condone such acts by other police officers. I will cooperate with any legally authorized agencies and their representatives in pursuit of justice. I know that I alone am responsible for my own standard of professional performance, and I will take every opportunity to enhance and improve my level of knowledge and competence. I will constantly strive to achieve these objectives and ideals, dedicating myself before God and in my chosen profession, law enforcement. Do you accept? I do. Congratulations. Council aware that we did receive Officer Jackson's final state certification towards back and finishing the top ten of this class. Uh, I'll start uh, with council members. I'll start down there with you last to the right and open the uh, floor for council members' comments to John to Officer Jackson. Uh, Officer Jackson, I'd just like to thank you for your hard work and dedication. Uh, it's mentally and physically uh, binding on an individual like you to go through a uh, course like that. I've been there and, and done that. It's not fun. I spend a lot of time away from your family, a lot of time away from your work friends. I just want to commend you on, uh, on the excellence that you uh, contribute to the town. Slam. John, I'm just I'm proud of your work ethic. Uh, proud to see you on the streets and how you treat people and conduct yourself. I know the academy was hard on you. I told you I wish I could have been there with you and support you. And uh, I got you back, and I'm proud of you. Thanks, sir. John, I remember your interview. I, met, I remember how much you wanted to be a part of the Lebanon Police Department. And every day since your employment with us, you have proven that. Through your hard work at the academy and your dedication, and how one thing you said is that you want to be a police officer to the people. And I see that when you're out there, and, and I hear that from people, from citizens. And I thank you for that. John, congratulations again. We're very proud of you. Uh, and the other thing is when we're out and about or in the crowd, it's not hard to find you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we, we know how to, we need you. We know where to find you. <laughs> but congratulations, Ms. Jackson. John, I congratulate you too, and I think you've done an excellent job, and you fit right in with our police department, and you've been doing great every day, and we appreciate it. You're nothing good, nothing except good about you. Thank you. Mr. Fields. John, congratulations. I've heard a lot of good compliments about you from the citizens. I've even heard some good compliments from, from the chief. So don't let him tell you he ain't done good. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations, proud of John, congratulations uh, for completion of the Academy. Like the mayor said, we're very proud of you. Um, you. You seem to be an upright young man, and we're glad to have you on board. Uh, I'll take this opportunity again to thank you for your military service. Absolutely. So we're, we're glad to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you. Six. 
uh, we had our 152, we had our 170, and we had our 250 or 220. So we had four state finalists, yeah. and we ended up with a couple state champions. So that was a big year for us. Absolutely. Uh, we were, and with COVID and everything like that, and the restrictions that these kids had to be put under, it's hard enough that you know you're asking a, a high schooler to sacrifice their time for practice, but you're also asking them to be disciplined enough to watch what they eat, to make sure that they're on weight consistently, and then to comply with COVID guidelines with everywhere that we went. Uh, it was really hard on them, and they were nothing but dedicated and. Coach Webb and myself and Coach Smith were nothing but proud of these guys for everything that they've done this year. Well, I agree, and we congratulate you. We have some certificates that we'd like to present. If you want, <clears throat> you can let me know if everyone's here or not as I go. I'm going to read this first one, and then I, uh, as we go, I'll call your name and your weight division. So we'll start with Cole Jesse. Is Cole here? He is a state wrestling champion in the 152 weight yes. division. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. 152. Trent Ray. Trent. Mm -hmm. How are you, man? I'm going to stand here and read. You care? Just for a second. Is Mr. Jackson here? successful winning the DHSL 2A State Wrestling Championship. Now therefore, be it resolved by the mayor and the town council, the Trent Ray be hereby commended in becoming the 2021 VHSL 2A Wrestling Weight Class 220 Champion. Be it further resolved that Trent Ray be hereby commended for his commitment, dedication, and success this 14th day of June 2021. Congratulations. Do you want me to stay up here so I can have a picture? Well, where's my photographer? Janice. Who? Janice. Oh, Janice is ready? Uh, you didn't know you were ready. Just kind of, if you would, if you hang just up here with us. Okay, is Ian here? Ian, Ian is not, he's not here. And Ian is the runner-up? Yes. In the 126 yes. weight division, is that correct? Yes. Fisher Martin. Congratulations, Fisher. Fisher is a second place state wrestling, uh, finished second place in the state wrestling finals and the weight class of 170. Is that correct? Uh, well, we want to commend you for your dedication and your hard work, but particularly as Coach said in COVID, what a crazy, crazy year, and uh, your success on this evening. So, congratulations. Thank you. Fisher, they were wrestling, they were practice partners. Oh, were so they? they, they during know, COVID? Yeah, yeah okay. during COVID, yes. Okay, Hunter Martin. Did he have to work? Yeah, he had to work. Okay. He looks a little tired. You will give it to him. Yeah. Uh, tell us his weight. He, was, he finished third? Yeah, third. And what weight division? 120. 120. Luke Childress. Good to see his mom, and the last time I remember you, That's you and your brother, yeah. you would come to visit, and you were all over Coach Kaiser's desk. I mean, the yeah. top of the desk, <laughs> in the desk, and yeah. trying to get a hold of the candy, best I remember. Yeah. Luke finished uh, third in the state wrestling tournament this year in weight class 132. Is that correct? Congratulations, big man. Real proud of you. Jackson Mullins. And Jackson, uh, you, by the way, congratulations again, man. You 
finished fifth in the state wrestling tournament this year in the weight class 138. Is that correct? The weight division? Or yes. Jackson Mullins, we commend you on your dedication and hard work during a crazy time that you all had to live through. So again, congratulations. Okay, let's see. We're going to have to go that, get that podium out of the way. Can you get all of us in here if we line up behind? Council, come over and line up behind this line up. Y'all come this way. Those guys over there, you can't, they're not going to be able to see you. They're all real quiet. I don't think you're a rational toe down. She probably could. I wouldn't push her. I think she's a rational toe Here or here? No, standing here on the floor with the side of the show. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Miss Jackson's our vice mayor. In case you all need Can you get everybody? Yeah, yeah, I was trying to get mayor. Okay. Cheese. Wrestling! Yeah. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. Congratulations, Coach. Y'all have a great summer. Thank good you. Good luck to you. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you, Coach Conley. Mayor, how many of those boys are graduating? Uh, uh, third, three. three. Mm -hmm. Yes, three. But we have the other, yeah. other ones that are returning. What it looks like we're winning awards for next year, too. Cole, Cole was a state champion. He's returning. Ian was a state runner up. He's returning. And Jackson is returning. Okay, there we go. See you next summer then, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I know we all may still be a little bit tired. We've had a, we had a great weekend kickoff at the first game of Cedar Fest. And uh, we had Mr. Shane Farmer here with us. So I'm somewhere. Come over here, Farmer. Hold that up there at the podium so we can wear you out. Yeah. And won't take much. Won't take much of it. We, as you know, we were all uh, around and you, we've seen you and talked to you, but for us and the group that's here, can you give us a summary of how the weekend went? Um, best and how? I think it uh, overall went excellent. Uh, the feedback, I, I, uh, I ended up doing a lot of shuttle running uh, at the golf carts. So I, I like talking to folks, and so I just decided I just, I saw an empty golf cart, so I just started shuttling people. I started talking to people when I called the mayor earlier. I talked to people from a little bit everywhere. There was, there was one couple from Nashville that came and gave them a ride out to the Greg Center. And they were like, you yeah, know, we, we, we just decided to come. We saw it. And I'm not sure where they told me they saw it from, but they, uh, they said they enjoyed the time and couldn't believe that, you know, we were running a shuttle system that would take them all the way down there and all the way back if they wanted to come back. So, uh, and there was even folks from, you know, just over the mountain, having them in Bristol, and, and, you know, and they were saying, you know, y'all really know how to treat people. You know, it's just, it's a compliment to everybody that was, you know, working that day, you know, so you know, and won't be provided for folks, you know. Um, and the lady from Bristol said, you know, we got a rhythm and roots every year, but I would never have a shuttle like this. So, um, you know, just, just different little compliments like that, you know, that's, you know, the, the town provides that's, you know, just, just that little bit, a little bit more effort, mm -hmm. it, it does go a long way. So, mm -hmm. so be proud that what you all are, are doing and what, what you're providing for the community and for the entire region. Well, you have about eight or nine food trucks here, and I understand we ran out of food. Yes, we had eight food trucks. Every one of them said, well, and a couple of them, Jason Barney, which is smoke wagon, he said, Shane, I closed the window three times, went to the grocery store three times, came back, opened back up, sold out all three times. Um, and there was a, another, a new one came from, from Admin, and that was a Hot Mess Express. It was a little cabin thing down there on the bottom. Um, I, I had contacted them about coming to Lebanon's events, and, and I told them, they, they said, well, how is Lebanon's events, really? And I said, well, when we have an event, just about every food truck we have says that. 
Well, she called me after the event. And I told you about it. She called me after the event and she said, Shane, you remember that first time you contacted us and told us when we asked you about Lebanon events and most of the food trucks sell out? She said, well, we thought you were just telling us that to get us over there. She said, she said, I want you to know it was unbelievable. We were not prepared. And she said, we closed down once and went to the store and came back and sold out again. And then we just didn't have anything left. So we shut down and said, well, we'll go eat at one of the other vendors. We went to the other vendors. They were out too. So she said, we piled in the truck, went out town, ate at a restaurant. And, and that's another thing too is most of every restaurant in the town of Lebanon was packed. So they can't say, you know, everybody's going out there to eat because they're getting the business too. So I saw it. It's a win win for the whole community. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody said they went to Pizza Plus and they told us two hour wait on this. Pizza Ted and Pizza Ted. Yeah. Yeah. Once that Pizza Plus right there on the corner. Yeah. Pizza Ted was out the door. Right. The dollars double line. And Angie, the new milkshake place, she just opened her milkshake yeah. stuff. So she said she sold everything she had. She did. Well, you know, uh, it gives us an opportunity to to build on the pluses. You know, it's, anytime we have an annual event, um, and I again remember this from some of my administrative days, you, you, you need to meet, we need to get together as soon as possible after the event, because what you like to do is identify the things that, you know, went right, that right. was done right. And then we start developing a list. Well, you know, there's going to be some things we could have done different. We need to shuffle things around. And then you got to add on, people think, you know, the second week of June is a year, you know, this weekend's a year away. And that sounds like, you know, a long time. In this, in this world, it's not a long time in this business. Right. I mean, we're going to have to start uh, getting thoughts from council yeah. and the, we will start with the Parks and Rec Committee, of course, all council members for input on what we would like to do right. uh, in the next year's event, which for those of you who are here, we just need to make sure that you know, the general public understands. We've agreed that this weekend is our annual day. We lock in because when you start getting <coughs> and trying to move weekends around with all the other towns around us and events, you get knocked out. Is what you follow yeah. off the list. So uh, we probably, uh, I would ask council, uh, and I'll talk to Deanna and the committee, this committee chair, but uh, we need to decide, to, uh, we need to have a meeting pretty soon uh, to start talking about, just as I said, those, the good things we could have done different. Right. How we need to change? Do we want to expand it? Do we want to keep it like it is? Right. You know, and those kind of things. So, with that, I'll be still in my comments. Any questions or other comments from council for Mr. Farmer? I only heard good things um, about about it. Had several people that I had talked to that were excited about it. And they, you know, said uh, really good things. Um, the one thing that I had talked to Shane about, I was um, worried about the uh, food truck and how the food trucks were down there on Wall Street. Um, but I talked to Hot Mess and um, and the, the donut people, and uh, you said they you placed them there strategically, and they loved it down there. They they liked being down there. And they, what helped them out was the flow of traffic coming from that direction, that people had to go by those food trucks. Right. Um, and um, said that it was a good a good place for them. I know that um, I had said maybe yeah. keeping all the food trucks in one area, and that might be something we look at later, you know, maybe keeping them all in the same area would be good. But, um, when I uh, talked to them, they were, they were happy with um, being in, in a different area. Um, and so, uh, just like Mr. W said, I, we do need to start planning oh, yeah. as soon as possible. Yeah, it takes, for next it takes year. a good full year to plan and do it right. Yeah. And, it really and to get those contacts from um, for the for the um, artists yes. to get them on that. But thank you. Thanks, Ms. Jackson. No, I, I've had all. Call me on the <coughs> comments 
and uh, yesterday the gospel singing was great, and Mr. Doty and I were talking. It was very, very hot out there, but that did not keep people away. But we were talking that it would be sometime next year we could have it indoors, that part of it, and he thought maybe a theater might be open. Hopefully. 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 Any other comments from council members? Mayor, I'll just say Shane Thanks and DP Chris and Kevin. Be sure to thank all the employees that participated and, and helped out. I mean, it's we talked about a hot mess after it, the show was over. Yeah. It was a hot mess down there. <laughs> it was a little overwhelming. And, and when I drove through the next morning and everything looked like we didn't even have an event there. Yeah, I know. It just amazing. Yeah. It and was. I'll, and, I'll yeah. add to Scott's because I didn't know. We walked and we walked at the government center. You could not tell that there was something at the government center. You could not tell that there was something here. So, excellent. Sorry. Well, as y'all mentioned, uh, these things, as we all know, don't just happen. Uh, but I will say this because we've been involved with it uh, since we started our bicentennial. Uh, it, it often, it's events <laughs> like this that prove to me the quality of employees we have in this town and their work ethic. And uh, we're certain, as Scott said, we're all very, very proud of them. Uh, uh, nothing but compliments from the performers about our staff and all the folks involved in that who are running. You give time, you never saw them sit still, they're going 15 different directions. It's, I guess what was Scott was saying, a hot mess, but they were, I mean, everybody had a role, they know what the role was, but for this, for to have this kind of event, for our citizens and our region and our, and our area. Uh, it takes good people working hard and a commitment from the government body to allow them to do that. And I, I appreciate the council for the support of our employees for these events and the support of these events. Uh, it, it, uh, it has so many pluses. Uh, uh, people were so, they, weren't they, so, they were so glad to get outside and be together again in fellowship. But, I mean, that was a heaven and after the year we've had. And, you know, the town obviously benefits from it as well. And in the business world, our businesses benefit from it. And it's an opportunity for the town to give things back to their citizens. And I think it's a, just a great adventure. And Shane and all your folks, we appreciate you very much. But we need if before we leave tonight, if someone will remind me, let's start getting together, Kevin, and planning, get an idea of how we're going to move forward to 22. Okay? Thank you, Sean. Chief Desmond, thank you. John. Yeah, I'd like to take it back on that. Absolutely. They had two events. For the PD, I had several compliments on you guys looking sharp, dress and appearance-wise, and your professional also. Uh, sanitation guys, streets department, everybody. People complimented how helpful they were and how welcoming uh, the Parks and Rec yep. staff was also. So I'd like to tell you guys thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all were so, so successful you knocked the power out of the printer dish on here. Yeah. <laughs> well, there wasn't, besides Sawyer Brown, I don't think there was a bigger star than Mayor Dewey. That's Sawyer Brown did that. She said, Scott Gilman. I said, Who's done that to me? But, uh, hey, what well, I'm going to say, I'm not, I, I was unhappy. I mean, I was, I, I was very happy that uh, Mark Miller knew my name <laughs> and, and bragged those. But, you know, he did say something I thought was pretty good. You know, he was explaining that a lot of localities just kept pushing their. You know, they'd schedule and keep pushing them out, pushing them out. And, you know, we all sat here and we worried about COVID, we worried about the restrictions. And the government body, we all said, well, we've seen some of the guidelines and we, we were good with the vaccine once the vaccines began to arrive. And we stood, and everybody stood solid to move forward. And I think that's what he was saying. It helped, helped them. Didn't it? You know, it's a, just a, it's a win-win for everybody. It's a big, big morale boost for the local community. Also. I agree. I agree. All right. 
Um, we added under new business street markings bids. I had two, Mrs. Nunley. Let me see who we got here. <clears throat> Before we get into the town manager's report. All right. Well, I appreciate that. 
So I'm going to get out to the baseball game. You see those pioneers win again. I hope so. Yes, indeed. We can't get out now. We don't. <laughs> well, they get going since six, though. That'd be, right. that'd be in bed before you get out of here, though. Yeah. I bet they won't. I'll see if they can go extra innings just for you. No. 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 All right. Well, uh, first of all, that's, of course, this is for the life saving crew. and. I wanted to let you know, uh, Nolan Stevens was going to be here with me, he says he's regrets that he could not be here tonight, but they put his mother on hospice this morning, and he's with her right I'm now, sure. as he should be. So if you'd please keep the, uh, him and the Stevens family in your prayers, we'd greatly appreciate it. But I uh, just want to take a few minutes of your time to follow up on our, when we were with you back at, at the April meeting. And since then, um, the board of directors and uh, crew leadership have been looking at the situation from different angles, and we're currently working on a new business uh, plan and a strategic, a strategic plan and business model. Uh, and while we want to maintain and grow our volunteer component, it's become evident that we've got to start looking at the life saving crew more as a business than as a civic organization. <clears throat> if we do that, uh, we run some numbers, we think that we can generate more revenue, create more opportunities for growth, and continue to serve the town and the county um, in that way. Uh, I've been with the crew is first, you know, a volunteer and board member here in recent years for 44 years. And it's hard to make this switch. We've always been more of a civic organization, service group. Um, but, again, talking to different consultants and some of you and just seeing the um, atmosphere in both health care and public <clears throat> service, that this is just going to have to be uh, a change in how we do business. So we're going to go from there. Um, so right now we're not going to ask the council to manage or supplant our current organization. Uh, we may come back to you in coming months, but if we do, it's going to be for a specific project or piece of equipment that will be well supported as an investment in growing the life-saving crew and enhancing the town's infrastructure. Um, so, keep us in your prayers that you have any wisdom going forward. We're always are open and we'll be happy to hear from you. Well, certainly good luck with, uh, with your change that you're going through, uh, Bill, so, and we all of us wish you success. So thank you for being here. Yes, and we're, uh, I do want to congratulate uh, the town on a successful Cedar Fest. And um, you notice the, the crew was able to staff both events with the truck as well as keep a 911 truck on duty. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you did well, we did well. It was a good experience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sure. Appreciate it. Thank you for the update, Mr. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Williams. Yes, sir. Uh, so the first item that I have uh, underneath my manager's report, uh, of course, Scott and Shane and I, we've been uh, corresponding back and forth, uh, trying to come up with a uh, an estimate uh, that we all feel really good about uh, in regards to finishing uh, the Russell Theater uh, facade. And... Uh, Looking at, uh, of course, the materials that it would take uh, to finish the facade and the labor costs, the marquee, uh, and so forth, we're looking somewhere about $170,000, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. And of course, uh, Shane and Scott, you guys can chime in. Uh, I know Scott, uh, he pretty much took care of the uh, getting the cost for the uh, for the marquee and, uh, and so forth. So I don't know if you need to comment on that being documented. Sure. Do you have, do you change you have a copy? I don't have a copy of that. Just, please will give me one. Well, I need you to look at it because I have a couple questions and a couple concerns. Uh, don't keep our ears just for yeah. a second. Yeah. This is just, just so, the marquee? Yeah. No, it's, 
I've got the little sheet that he did for. Yeah, we have it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got it. <clears throat> Hold on. We don't have that, do we? Tell me about that one. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, you want him to go on and let make copies and move on on his report and go back to this time and see anybody have a copy. I'm sorry, I wasn't planning on talking about it, but I can't help myself. We'll go ahead and talk about it. Uh, Shane, looking at this, uh -huh. what kind of format do we need this in to satisfy DHCD um, as, a, as a cost estimate uh, for when we bid this out? Uh, there's some redundancy here, right. you know, like with the Lebanon block, like it seems like we just need the framing costs maybe uh, from a contractor uh, on just on just the facade because that will have to be done. But there's some redundancy like with the glass work, for example, in Lebanon block. Right. And then, of course, uh, you know, what's not on here too is pressure washing the building, reappointment of the, of the brick if, we're gonna, if it needs that. And then also uh, Mr. Higgins quote, which I'll try yeah. to forward that to Kevin. I, it's not I, I realized that this afternoon before we came in here. Yeah. I've got Mr. Higgins' estimate right here for the, uh, that's for the, basically, show casings outside. Gotcha. And uh, just that type of. Uh, but where you've worked with the HCD, can you get this in a format that, yeah, that'll uh, be acceptable to them? As far and, as and they're not real picky about how you line item or so to speak, uh, but Kevin does have a sheet where we already been working on, yeah. and uh, I had seen him that, so he's got that, and that's what I used when I was coming to Plateau. So we've got a budget format that shows line, line item by line item. Gotcha. So yeah, we can we can break this into that, and it'll show it, it'll show each each line item, it'll show each cost. Do they allow a little bit of contingency too? Like well, like, I was because Lane Group put it in in our other elements. You so, almost need to do 10, almost 10 percent at least contingency. I, I was thinking about that this afternoon after Kevin and I met. I was like, you know, we need to put some wiggle room in there a little bit, yeah. you know. And, and the basic, every time we did a project, there was always about 10 percent contingency. Yeah. So I would consider 10 percent contingency just just so you have some space to, because I mean. Mayor, just just let the council know the the reason I what we ran into with with different elements is where our cost estimate come in a lot lower than the actual bid document, and then we had to start cutting stuff out to make the budget right. So this is just instead of land group doing this for us, we're able to do it, save ourselves a lot of money. But this is just a cost estimate, and when we bid it out. Then the cost estimates can't come, cannot exceed the, or cannot exceed this by ten percent, right? Yeah, Shane, where they, they, they won't fund it, or they won't fund all of it, so to speak. Well, they'll make us rebuild. So, yeah. so you know, I'm not trying to run the cost up for the for the town, no. but it's advantageous to us if, if if it's a good solid estimate and not too conservative, because we don't want the bids to come in uh, over, and then and then DHC uh, won't let us award the contract. So, are we, in your vision, I know we've been working on it, we've talked about getting this data together. I guess in my mind, the phrase you're talking about, how close are we to actually bidding out the facade work? You mean with the HCD really Wednesday? Yes. Can we get, we're going to do budget revisions to kind yeah, of see how that's much. That's what we have to do first. Okay. we, we got to know what we have in that budget revision. Okay. that we're going to have towards the theater facade and, and Debbie's been working on that so she's going to present she's she's working those numbers she's going to present that to us Wednesday she hopes oh okay so Wednesday we hope we have that in hand all right and then if, if you know at the at that meeting if we're good with that then she can start working that up to do the request okay for the amounts okay and then we can we'll get you to we sign got CV. For yeah. them to approve the amounts yeah. before we bid. Right, so we don't know how much to ask for because we don't, because right. the HCD is going to want to see it on paper first, how much is left over before right. we can ask. You know, obviously, we're obviously we going to want a big piece of this to be covered by grant funds. Right, so once we see what's left from the pots that we're not using, 
That's right. what we're doing. We, we're, we're doing a revision of that budget. And it looks, just from what Debbie's saying, there's about $250,000 to $300,000 left. Okay. And my suggestion to you all was, let's half that. Half of it goes towards your streetscape, half of it goes towards your marquee and, and your facade for the theater. And that way, it doesn't look like the town's grabbing everything for their building. You see what I'm saying? Now, let Scott and Shane, the figure you all talking about, like 170000 that figure, right. does that include the marquee? Yes, that's the what this number is. The marquee is $90,000. So it's in the front day. of the building, from Jerry's side. And the glass in the front right. of the it's, the, it's the doors, it's the box it's, office. And yeah. Which also includes your, your cleaning of the brick and if we have to remortar any of that down the side. Because right. anything you can see from Main Street, we can use these dollars. In, this, in our current downtown grant. Yeah. Okay. We got an estimate from uh, Donnie Higgins on the showcase boxes out front. Um, we're not going to restore the old ones, but, the, but it'll be similar to the old ones uh, in dimensions and, and uh, aesthetics. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there any questions at this point from council? Are we good for Kevin to go on? All right, good deal. Uh, the next item that I was wanting to talk about, and Mary, you can chime in there. Uh, we uh, we went out and got some bids, uh, and you can see it there in front of you. Uh, Point broadband, we received one service, and what we did is we basically uh, sent out what we wanted. We actually met uh, with uh, most of our department heads just to sit down to see as far as their internet, how many phones uh, each department had, and so forth. But we also met with Carlton, which is our IT, our IT uh, mm -hmm. personnel that uh, helps us with our uh, network and so forth to make sure that. Uh, we were uh, presenting uh, something that made sense for uh, for these two companies to uh, bid on, and the first one is Point Broadband, and uh, which they came in somewhere around sixteen sixty nine oh one, so just under seventeen hundred dollars. Then we, uh, who was, hang on, I'm sorry. I, so I did the math. It's basically um, well, because it's for each department. Oh right? yes. It's, they bid it out for each department, and so mm -hmm. yeah, just by doing the math, and, right. um, how much it would be, and that would be um, uh, eight hundred twelve dollars. Uh, that's for the phone services. Oh okay. Yeah, it's sort of split out, so uh, they've got a lot of information in here. So what I did is I just added up all the numbers. And oh, okay. basically, the, the bid comes out to be sixteen sixty nine oh one, which is just under seventeen hundred dollars. Sixteen sixty nine oh one. Yes, sixteen sixty nine oh one. And that's per month. Yes. All right. Phone and internet. <clears throat> Phone and internet. And of course, we also sent out the same exact information just to make sure that Zach is back as to Chantel, and. Uh, if you look on the very last page, on page well, on page five, two hundred dollars. Their their bid is fifty two thirty six. Oh, I guess Miss Stanley have a recommendation on that. <laughs> yeah, I think she probably will. Any questions? So when you say, are we? Do these match up, or are we yes. comparing, as we say, apples to apples? Yeah, and what I did is I gave both the exact sheets to both parties and said, I need this, A, B, C, D, all the way through, how many phones, what internet, and they went with that and came back with a bid from each one. Very good. Okay. Hey, I, I do have one question. Yes, sir. Kevin, are these comparable speeds? Yes. This, this is a lot of information to sit here and compare on the one on the this. They're comparable speeds. Mm -hmm. And they both are fiber connections. And when um, Kevin and I talk about um, these, the, the difference is that Point Broadband can offer all of this in-house. They are 100% set up to offer this to mm -hmm. us. Chantel has to service some of it out. 
because they it's don't. Have, yeah, so because they don't have the capability that Point Broadband does, and that is why you see under each department you see those um, different um, charges, and those would be those um, where they would have to you know take care of each one individually, whereas Point Broadband is taking care of the whole thing. So what will this become effective, Kevin, if we agree to move forward? Well, that's what I'll have to reach out to uh, George. Uh, he okay. said probably give him maybe, I think he said four, six or so weeks out to, okay. you know, uh, to get everything turned around. So it, it'll take us a little bit of time okay. to, to get it resolved. Well, I uh, certainly appreciate you gathering this information. This is something that, of course, Ms. Stanley and I know council members have been trying to clarify and try to help provide service to a reasonable cost. So yeah. uh, with that said, is there a, does council wish to make a motion accepting a bid tonight? Mr. Doty, I would like for us to accept um, Point Broadband's bid to change our internet service 100 percent to one uh, to Point Broadband. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same, same. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Good job. Uh, the swim team building, uh, we were looking at uh, to see what it would basically take. Let me get my paper in front of me here. Uh, basically, we were looking at a 10 by 16. Uh, building over next to the pool, and, and Shane, you can chime in uh, any time. Uh, but we met uh, with Robbie and Billy and everybody that will be involved, and also was Hank, uh, to see about where we can actually locate this building without, uh, you know, building over top of a water line or sewer line or so forth. Uh, and then we also, uh, we had Mr. Stephanie to also meet us there. So we all met to make sure what, what, what size actually would work uh, to allow us to still be able to have our bucket truck to drive through there to work on our lights if we need to. Uh, we have room to bring the pump out with the truck and so forth. So all of that was resolved. So basically we've come up with a 10 by 16 building, which is not much smaller than the existing building that's beside of it. The existing building is a 12 by 16. And of course, we have our pump controls and so forth in there uh, for the splash pad. So obviously, this building will suffice the needs for the swim team. Uh, but we also met with uh, Alyssa to sort of give her an idea where it was that and how you know they can basically uh, take all their equipment and so forth. So what we've got, if I can paint a picture basically, is we have this 10 by uh, 16 building where the the double gates that comes out of the pool you will open those gates and we'll actually have like a sidewalk concrete sidewalk that will basically go right into the building part of it and it'll be like a garage door to open slide up, up and down and so forth that way they can just come straight off uh, straight out of the pool uh, into the uh, the building and take their equipment and so forth just right out you know actually be able to walk on concrete. Uh, but then we also have a sidewalk that comes out of the corner right there at the, uh, at the swimming pool. There's a small gate there that you can actually go in and out uh, from that area. We're also going to put a uh, sidewalk from there that actually goes down the hill and intersect. It butts up against the existing sidewalk. And uh, Shane was mentioned it would be convenient for like some of the kids and so forth uh, to be able to uh, go back and forth from the pool to the splash pad and so forth. So it would be a good walkway. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it to where that there's concrete, you know, that connects the pool area to the, to the building and then from the pool area to the splash pad. So we got with Robbie, and Robbie uh, basically come up with an estimate on what the cost would be. Uh, so my suggestion, and, and we can talk about it, my suggestion would be to let Robbie to go ahead, take care of all the concrete, 
the sidewalks, and even go ahead and take care of the concrete for the building. Uh, that way, if we want to go ahead and let Steffi to build from the floor up, it would be a whole lot cheaper uh, doing that. So I've got some figures here just to give you an idea. Uh, so with Robbie to do all his work, which is all the concrete, the sidewalk, both of the sidewalks, and the flooring of the building, uh, it's $46.85.90. So it's basically $4,700. Forty six eighty five nine exact. Yeah, for the conference. Right. Okay. Uh, and of course Steffi, if we wanted him to go ahead and build it from the floor up, he gave me a quote of fifty eight hundred dollars. And that's just strictly his labor. And then he figured the material should be somewhere under six thousand dollars. So a total cost to do this, we're looking at $16,485.90. Uh, so basically $16,500 will take care of this project. And, and the labor that we'll be paying, basically key, will be the $1,500. Have any idea how, how soon or how long it would take for, to get the, once the concrete's done to get the building done? Well, did he, say? Uh, he didn't comment on how quickly he could do it, but obviously I wouldn't think he would take too long was just because it's just a, a, a small building. Well, the swim team starts tonight. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I'm sure he'll jump on it just as soon as possible. Uh, and I can have uh, Robbie to go ahead and go forward. And obviously we we'll want all the concrete done and finished, and then we can let him come in and go from there. It's pretty reasonable. And they're storing their equipment right now in the splash bath hunter. And they, they moved it out tonight. And my corner here is empty where the dive boards are. So they're going to they're gonna leave it there on the deck where it's empty. Around the corner. Yes. The pump house. Yeah, the pool pump house. Yeah, pool pump house. Just the, the, yeah. the rock, the main lines though. Yes. Not, not the diving, not the kickboards and... No, none of that. None of that. Okay. They'll put it back in there. Okay. But they, so they have storage right now. So, because okay. uh, it's empty. All the only thing that's in there now is the is the pump room stuff. Okay. Right. Hey, he still have that building done in three days. I'm yeah, I don't think. As long as the materials are there, it'll be done in two or three days. Does the swim team do any type of fundraising change? They do. Uh, I don't. I don't know the gist of it. I know uh, they they have entry fee, of course, which is. Uh, when they sign up the kids, I think it's, I want to say $45, I'm not sure, it's yeah. something like that. It, it's $45, um, and, and so that doesn't raise a whole lot of money, right. just because they don't want to charge too much money for kids to be a part of the swim team. They are their own um, entity, they're not part right. of the town, but they do um, sell t-shirts, they'll sell um, uh, like bags, like swim team bags to carry their stuff that is a fundraiser. They also concessions, concessions yeah. that helps to, to raise money for them. Um, but it's it's more of a service. It's not just for it's not um, for profit. You know they um, try and do as much as they can to lower the costs for the kids so they can participate in the swim team. Uh, before when we had the old building, the swim team had their own room. And it was just their room. They had a key to it. Nobody was in and out of there. Nobody borrowed our stuff. You know, so I think when the new building was built, that was kind of the idea that we would be able to store their stuff. So this building will allow them to keep all of their stuff in there. Their tables, their coolers. We've had, you know, we can talk about it too. They've had some of their stuff lost um, to where it would be, you know, just for, for them. Not get lost. I guess a concern of mine, uh, probably should have asked this question prior, is are we using town payer tax dollars to fund a private entity? No, you're not. It's a public entity. It's for the citizens of the town. It's all, they're, not, they're, they're not a private for profit organization. They're not for profit. They're a non profit. 
Shane, yeah. you plan on storing other stuff in this building as well? well that's what we've been doing that for years. I'm, I'm, hoping, house it, I'm hoping there's room to, because we got a lot of pool furniture this question. Yeah. And we've been, we've been lugging that back and forth from either the cannery or the shop since we built the building. Because uh, there's just no place to store it there. Uh, we, you know, when Mark left, he, he did a little attic space. You know, it's great space, but I mean, you can't fit this stuff up in the attic. It just won't fit through the doorway. I mean, it's great space. Like, like we're gonna store flags and stuff, mm -hmm. banners. It's awesome space. I mean, you've been up there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, a great space. space. We can clean it. I mean, it's it's really nice. We'll be able to organize those banners and get to them when we want to. So it's great space. But the pool deck stuff, there's no way it can go up in there. I mean, it's just no way. So this past year, I put all the tables and all the chairs in the, the splash pad mm -hmm. room. I mean, it was from floor to ceiling, but I got it in there. Uh, if we could have a little bit more space, which I think we will, because their stuff doesn't take up that much room, because we put it in there and there's still room in the splash pad room. So, uh, I mean, I'm not talking like, like a lot, but we would still, what we what we could use excess of, we would definitely use it for the pool deck stuff. So, we can use that building to store some of our fixtures. pool deck fixtures. Yeah, and that, way we, and that way it doesn't have to, I mean, every year we're saying, Billy, where's this, where's this? Oh, I see what you're So saying. now, it'll all be one location, I feel like. Okay. Because we already got most of it in the splash back home. So this this will give us a little bit more room too, with the pools, with the swim team stuff, and I, I think it'll be a lot better. And this building mainly is for those lane lines. Yeah, well. I mean, it's for the other stuff. Well, and too, and see, right now we, we could actually put those lane lines in that splash pad, but the, the, the door. If we had a garage door on it, they'd go in and that, but they don't have a garage door. So the that's why we're doing the garage door on the new one. So that we can roll those in there. But but you would say that as uh, Scott said, you would also be able to use that for excess storage, yes. Right. For the full oh, for the full furniture and stuff. Everything that's there, we'd be able to keep here instead of having to go hunt it down when we get rid of it. Mayor, to mm. touch on Elijah's comment, mm -hmm. to clear that up, that equipment is Town property, correct? Town, town Lebanon has purchased that material years ago and, has, and, has, well, and has upkept that. It's our stuff. Yeah, that's our equipment. And we well, need somewhere to keep our equipment. Well, plus, like, you know, like, you know, Shane answered there too, and this is what lies in his question. If we're actually, if we're not just going to use it, we're going to use, it's have a multi purpose use for pool deck, our equipment to go in there. Oh, yeah. so, I mean, we, we, you're trying to get everything on one side instead of spreading them out everywhere. Correct. Okay. I got you. Mayor, my only concern is being exclusive with Keith Steffi. And our purchase policy, uh, to remind the council that anything over $5,000 to $30,000 shall require two red quotes. So I think just for the not giving the perception that Keith Steffi gets all the work we do like we've done on other projects. We need to get at least one more quote to meet our own policy. Uh, and I know that time is an essence on this project. I know nobody will do a better job than Keith. Uh, but I just think that unfortunately we need to uh, move forward with the concrete work, prove it, and get a second quote. For the contract work. Is he working somewhere else now? I mean, is he doing the theater? Well, he's working for us at J.S. Usually Park and working at the theater still, I think, right now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, is he uh, won't be able to. Well, he's, he's oh. down with electrician and plumbers at the theater. He's managing that subcontractors. And I believe he's finished with, uh, he's 99% finished with the, uh, the signs at Easterly and the solid waste facility. I think we're about ready to put the signs up. So I uh, don't know how long it take. I mean, you want to do that? You want to do that between now and July, or between now and well, the I, next meeting? Honestly, I'd like as soon as Kevin can get another quote, and I'd like to move forward with the project. 
And I, I think even if Kevin gets another quote, it won't hold us up. And if, yeah. if we can yeah. start on the concrete work and okay. get that additional quote, and the first time that we meet together, that he has this at least another quote, we can yeah. uh, make a decision. Is that a current building out there, Kevin? Is that a, is that a stick built building on a concrete foundation, or is it a pre-built? It, it's a concrete, but uh, it's a metal building. I don't think it's wood inside. No, I think it's all, think it's all pads, it's on the concrete a, pads. Yeah, it's on the concrete pads. So are we going back with the, with the same looking building here? I mean, I would, I would imagine that yeah. instead of doing a 16 by 10, but we, if we're going to spend 16 grand on a storage building, why not make it look just like the one beside it? Yeah. Is it going to be the metal building? It's going to be the metal building. Right? building. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'll be a post steel building. Yeah, just like oh, okay. just like so. It's yeah. not stupid. So two oh, separate. Right. I mean, do they they want? Yeah, there'll be two separate buildings. Okay. Just because of the elevation differences. Same, Same color, color metal and everything. Yeah. That's what I want to watch. This this is a yes or no question. The lines are just ask. I know what the splash pad building looks like. Right. The proposed building is it going to look just like that? Yeah. Okay. Except a garage door. So yeah, it will have a garage door. Okay. And it's a 16 by 10. I'm asking for a toilet. Oh, so. I want to look identical to what we have. Well, the problem is. We don't have room. We don't have room to take the bucket truck around through. It just causes us more headache. What it is, we've got a light uh, over there on that side, and we need to get a bucket truck to it. You know, the street light. All right, so we're leaving here to turn Robbie loose on the concrete part of this. Is right. that correct? On the council side? And you're going to get another quote yeah. for the steel hose bill. Right. Okay. Be good for you to have that next Monday. I'll do my best. <laughs> Since we're meeting here. Um, Mr. Doty, can we tell the council what we had to do for this one? Quote, 
and we will reconvene. We're holding up on the concrete for and all that yeah. the next Monday. Okay. This is uh, something that uh, Brad and I uh, have been talking about, and uh, Brad wanted me to add this uh, under my report so we could discuss it, uh, and that is uh, the CentOS uh, quote. It should be located in the back of your packet. Uh, it's under information, and it's probably about halfway, halfway back. Just go until you see the, the quote there. Stupids, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. This is a uniform uh, company, and uh, this is a quote uh, that was given to me. And uh, Brad, I'll turn it over. In one of our previous meetings, we, I think it well, might have even been a budget meeting, we were discussing the uniform rates. And as I reviewed those, I thought that they seem a little bit steep, you know, and there's, I know there's different options. I've worked and had uh, several different uniform companies service while I've worked. Um, I don't have the Aramark papers that we use now. I don't have that total, but we can add it to this. We're, we're paying each week, we're paying Aramark on average about $700. A week. We be a do. The town of Lake. Okay. <clears throat> and proposed in front of you is about $120 cheaper per week at $573. And that's apples to apples. Everything's the same. And I think they've even spoke to some of our employees and can even upgrade us to upgrade our uniforms that our guys wear to uniform Carhartt pants, uh, better shirts. In this, in this price? Under this price? Yeah. Did we have a contract? Did there is no check contract. That out? No contract. There's three size changes. $120 month savings yes. per month. That's pretty good. That's per month, per week. Per week. Per week. Per week. Yeah, so on average at 700, that would be 36,400 a year. Um, and proposed here is 29,802. Okay. So we're comparing. So that's the dollars savings a year. They're off the same thing we're getting. On yes. this list is what we're getting. Yes. Purposes of discussion, Brad, do you wish to put a motion on the floor? We discuss it there. Well, you can discuss it, but you, you need, I'd like to put a motion on the floor. I would like to make a motion that we switch our uniform service to from Aramark to Centos. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, discussion for the motion on the floor. I'd like to discuss uh, a couple of things here. How many of our employees actually, or do all employees, are they involved in the uniform program? So his numbers here are for all employees. So Aramark's numbers would be elevated due to not all employees participating. Is that correct? Yeah. My next question is, has anybody looked at purchasing uniforms versus renting uniforms? You know, I think uh, in a blue collar environment, uh, like we have rental services would be a better fit for our employees. If 
person being able to keep this clean and neat looking as they do. They're harder to keep up with. They're tracked through Centos. They're tracked by a barcode. And you know they're clean. We are in a contract with Airmark for mats at the community center. For what? Mats. The mats. So Shane signed a contract. Pretty sure we negotiated that contract last July. That's what I asked if we were to contract. Because just for the man, it's not. Yeah, just for the man. That's just the man. But I asked him a couple weeks ago, they yeah. told me we weren't. Yeah. We were in the last couple of weeks, we weren't in the contract. Okay, we follow up. So we provide this, this provides it to every employee brand? Yes. And this ain't something we need to rush. If you'd like for me to arrange, uh, Rob Nestor was the sales rep. If you'd like for me to have him come to a meeting, I know he wouldn't mind a bit. I'd like, yeah. Yeah, this don't have to be rushed. What about the, uh, how long, when's the contract up there mark for the mats? I don't know, you said Beverly told her it was that, but I talked to the Aramark guy last week and he told me that he was willing to go down to one mat and to keep, I guess, the contract. You know, that we wouldn't break the contract. Thank you. So. We didn't find out that contract first. Like the mat. But I'd, you, I'd be more than happy to cut those mats in half. Or Can you withdraw your motion, Brad, please? Absolutely. Do they want a contract break? We, no. And hey, Brad, I'd like to look at it uniforms versus fixtures and other things, you know what I'm saying? Because I talked to Diane today about it. When I read over accounts payable, um, we hadn't talked to Shane about it, but um, I don't remember the astronomical number we're paying for mats over there for rental. But, you know, what we did here at the town hall, I think we purchased them uh, through Dominion, and it would be more cost effective, literally, to, yep. to purchase them and Awesome I, think, I, think items, out, I think items like that would be different than our uniforms, for sure. We paid Aramark thirty-one forty-seven eighty-four on five thirty-one twenty-one. Three thousand one hundred forty-seven dollars and eighty-four cents. If that's a one-year contract. Miss Diane, that's, I'm about 100% that's going to be up in August because I remember having Shane renegotiate that during uh, July meeting last year. Well, I think, Kevin, are you, are you, are you I'm back down to work? Call on that. Can you meet, Rob's going to be in town tomorrow. Okay. Can you meet him after 11? Yeah. Can I'll give you his number? Yeah. We should have in our email too. Yeah, Rob, right, yeah. He's going to be in Lebanon anytime after 11. And Kevin can report back to us with these questions on Monday. Well, in fact, might as well take the mats off that list, Brad. Okay. Because we're already in the contract. But, so Brad's withdrew his motion, Mary's withdrawn her second, and we're tabling Sintas until the, the next okay. meeting. Okay. okay? Okay. I'd like to <coughs> also, Kevin, if council would be agreeable to make Move item six to the last item on your report and do the seven, eight, nine first. Start with the new bathroom. Move Sky Solar to last of your Oh, report. okay, I see, I see. Mayor, can we back up just for a second? Sure. I'm sorry, I know you want to move forward, but Elijah and Brad, I'm going to forward you this invoice. Uh, the community mats itself are over $300 a week. That's twelve hundred twenty-eight dollars a month for mats. And it's got the, it's got everything broke down: shop uniforms, shop towels, administrative mats, street uniforms, administrative uniforms. It's got the whole breakdown. Now, is think that real? This is the three thousand uh, dollar invoice that we get that Elijah just got. This is the breakdown of that invoice that we get. I mean, that we're paying every month. I thought what I was saying for me. We're is, renting the mats. Yeah, I think they changed. We the don't own the mats. Right. Would it be cheaper to own the mats? Yes. 
this go out and buy some lands is my question. Still rent. You don't want to contract up with them and buy it? I will check and see. Well, Mr. Allen was saying that they're willing to back off on the number of rents over there to keep to keep from breaking the contract. Okay. I mean, it looks like it's almost like a carpet. Yeah, and yeah, I think if we keep one man, we may, may not be in, in violation of that. That's what he said. So. Okay. What? Sorry, Mary. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, Kevin. Uh, Chris just reminded me that if we wanted to get out of that contract, if we're still under the contract, then all we got to do is give a written notice of 30 days. So if we are under contract and we still want to, all we've got to do is just have a written notice of getting out. So just so that you'll know. Thank you, Chris. Break. 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 Break.